Come on. There we go. Like I said, I've got his head is one form. I've got even the ear is one form, the neck. All the little things I've kept flat. I've kept very, very simple. Uh, keeping it simple will at least keep it very cartoonish. And it'll be easier to read once you... Um, once you add the little small details. I'm not going to worry about the background for now. Probably before the background, I'll do something that goes along with the story. I've heard two different versions of this story. One, he's racing a train. The other, he's racing a uh, the machine. Do you, do you know, like, is there an official one? or? I meant the mm -hmm. machine when I race said train. Okay. Uh, it's a 53 or shorter than that, but I've always heard it was an automatic drill. Or yeah, yeah, machines. nailing machine, stuff like that. I heard one, it's like he's... Um, there's a train coming, or there's there there needed to be a, a hole dug into a, a side of a mountain, and so he had to like, <coughs> excuse me he had to like finish out the railroad before the train went through. That was well, that's that understood. Like he apparently they were doing <coughs> he was drilling the holes for us for spikes that held the train down, so he wasn't necessarily building the railroad. Ah, so uh, okay, all right. So basically, he was he was making the. Spots that the, the whole nail was into. Okay. And I guess that's what, because he said they only went 10 to 20 feet a day. Okay. Something like that. And he was going faster. Okay. Um, as far as making the, the differences in each area and the differences in color, so naturally uh, his face is a little bit lighter than the rest of his skin color. This will come in handy, especially when I start doing the shading in Photoshop. If I was to make everything the exact same color, it would look something like this. Very, very difficult to know where his jawline is or where any other particular area is. So that's why I made it slightly different. Even the same thing for his nose. His nose is just slightly a different color, keeping everything very, very simple. I could go in and add smaller details, like if I wanted to add folds in his ear. Um, I would go back in with a slightly darker or slightly lighter type color and still keeping in that same type of style. There we go. Oh, I wanted to show up. Where are you? There we go. Something slightly darker to give it that kind of feel. Eh, I'll get rid of it for you. Here's the fun part. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it into Photoshop. Copy, and I know I've already got one made. <clears throat> but when you make a new document, I don't know if you knew this, in Photoshop, whatever you have copied to your clipboard, it's automatically going to give you the height and width of it in pixels. Um, you can convert it to inches. So if I just pasted it now, it would be a seven by seven inch by fifteen uh, in height. I'm just going to make it eleven by seventeen, so I know I've got plenty of size to work with. I'm going to keep the resolution pretty high too, <clears throat> just for that. When you paste. Since these are vectors and you're pasting into a rasterized um, working environment, you can choose Smart Objects, and if you, if you know what this works from, Smart Objects allow you to go back and re-edit it. I'm mainly concerned about the pixels, so I'm not going to worry about either paths or the shapes. We're just going to paste it down. This will give you the opportunity to size it up, and then we'll click the checkbox to lock in what I've created. From here, it's basically the same setup as we've done in the past in your layers. You've got the object on one, so we'll want to create, if I'm uh, adding shadows, make another layer on top of it and use a clipping path to make sure everything stays within that particular area. Here's the next fun thing. Specifically for this style, <clears throat> I want to create kind of a gradation of color. So underneath his jawline, I want it to be a little bit darker and to fade under here. To do this, we're going to work between the uh, magic wand tool and the brush tool. With the magic wand selected, here's the options you got to keep in mind. First of all, I want it to be continuous, so I don't want to select the entire thing. And I want to sample all the pixels on all of the layers because we're working on a blank layer, but I wanted to see the pixels on layer one. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So those two things are very, very important. Uh, in general, I keep the tolerance pretty low since these colors are very close to each other. This way it ensures that I also select that. We'll keep everything else exactly the same. So I've got this. I'm going to select this particular area so it only gets the neck area. We'll go in, grab my paintbrush, and I'm going to 
hold down Option and select this color. I want it to be slightly darker from that color, so I'm going to go in and double click here. Oop, there's my color picker. <clears throat> and then choose something that's slightly darker from my current color to that one. We'll say, okay, let me plug in my keypad so we can when we start painting. I've got a brush that's very, very large right now. <clears throat> Excuse me, large right now. So we'll shrink it up. Since I have only this area selected, it's only going to paint inside of that area. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And since I've got it very uh, soft edged, let's drop the opacity of that one. I can build up and get that kind of look. If you, for instance, these marching ants, the outline that I have is kind of um, distracting for me. Command H will hide it. So now when I start to paint, it'll stay relatively good. That's looking pretty good. So it, it just gives it a little extra pop. It's almost like a drop shadow, but I'm controlling what the, uh, the shadow would look like and exactly where it goes. Same thing for the face. So if I Command H to unhide it, I'll deselect it. Uh, let's see, where are my tools? Get the magic wand, I'll select the face now. Hide it, Command H. Get my brush. And I can start painting in a little bit darker under here. Notice now, since I've already got my dark selected, when I choose Option, I can use those specific colors. I don't have to go back to my color picker all I've got to do is pick whatever color that I want. And I know this is more of a medium brown, so I can paint that in, work with it, maybe get a little darker, <clears throat> and paint in those edges as well. So very, very easily, very quickly, I can um, start blending in whatever I'm working on. W is the keyboard shortcut to get your selection, so I've got that selected now. Command H. very, very easily, very quickly I'm building up my shadow shapes that I'm working on. Check out my layers palette. You can start to see it pull in. I didn't even change my blending mode. I'm still working in normal, so I don't have to um, change it to multiply or something. I know this will get a lot darker. If I do need to get it darker, maybe I would just choose a darker version of black but since I have it selected, it's not going to paint anywhere else. Following my simple shapes, I know there would be a slightly smaller area. Pretty cool. So now that's definitely sticking out. If I wanted to do, uh, say, an angular highlight on his cheek, so <clears throat> in this case, I'm going to use my polygon selection tool. And just make a selection of the area that I want. Uh, let's see, so in this case I wanted the this side of his face to be... Uh, how's this going to go? So now I've got just this side of his face selected. Remember I'm also working on a clipping mask so it's not going to paint out of here. Grab my brush. Get a little bit lighter. <coughs> When I paint in on it, it'll stay just highlighted on that side. Whether I like that or not, I can go back and, and change it. Pretty cool? Mm -hmm. Really, really simple. If I wanted to do the same thing for the nose, um, I've seen some people, let's see, I'll deselect that, not have a nose uh, drawn off whatsoever. So if I, I'll just quickly paint over this. I got rid of the nose. I can give an indication of the nose just by using my selection tool. So I'll draw off that basic shape. I've only got that area selected. Choose my paintbrush. Load up a black color. Uh -oh. Make it larger. Now when I paint, see very easily I get kind of that style. It's almost like it's been airbrushed on there. So that's an easy, quick way of just giving it a little bit of a punch on that side. Very style, very awesome, cool, cool, cool. The second thing I wanted y'all to do was to look up some textures to add to your uh, 
your document that you created. Oh, there we go. In this case, I'm going to add the texture to the background of his pants. Why is there a blue? Oh, somehow that got off by a little bit. That's okay. Um, I'll work in my other one since I've messed that one up. So if I wanted to add some sort of pattern or texture to his pants, I could do a search for something like corduroy or cotton texture. Let's do one really quick. So, uh, oh, give me a weird texture. What's something else I can pull from? You tell me. Any texture. Sand. Sand. Cool. That, that'll work really well. I like that one. I can add this texture to whatever his, his pants would be, or uh, if I wanted something even a little bit more grainy uh, to work from. So eh, let's try this one. So I'll copy this one. Copy the image. Since I'm working in Photoshop, this will work out really well. <clears throat> and paste it into here. And in general, we want it to be on his pants. Also want to turn on the clipping mask. So first of all, it's clipping to this area. To make it show up only on his pants, I'm going to turn off this. We'll grab my selection tool and we'll select the pants area. Hold it down shift, add on to it. Now, when I turn on visibility, we'll do this for both, and do a layer mask, it will mask out to that particular area for that. All cool? Then it's simply a matter of changing up whatever color mode you're working in. So now he's got sandy pants to work from. From this, you can also keep adding extra layers. So if I wanted to add the, uh, the shadow layer, maybe overlay is not the best one for that. Color burn? Hey, that's looking good. There's a great texture to add to what you're working with. Add texture to his upper shirt. You can add texture to, um, to the skin. Be careful about textures for the skin because you don't want those to look, uh, look like leather or look like it's something otherworldly. Usually skin textures you want to keep pretty smooth. Other things you can add different textures to and it gives it that just a little extra pop for, uh, for how it would work. But I've got a little bit of an idea of what the uh, shapes should look like. Excuse me, the shadows should look like. Maybe I'll convert this to, there we go, something darker. And I can keep adding shadows to that area to work in as well. Any questions so far? <clears throat> this is what I'm looking for for this particular project. You're adding texture. Uh -huh. Maybe I'll select those pants and work inside of there. You're adding texture, you're adding highlights to what you're working with. Maybe I'll change the blending mode. It's way too dark. Pull down the opacity. <clears throat> Let's make another one just for the highlights. Uh, something light like that. Add a highlight on one side. That'll screen it up. Oh, cool. That's what we're doing with that. Imagine that on each of the different areas. But first thing I would do is go in and add your shadows first. Get your shadows, get your highlights, get your tonal values down first, then go back and start adding the texture. Don't do like I just showed you where I did the texture first. Texture comes um, once you know exactly the way it should look. Do pay attention to how shadows should fall. So if I know this bar is going across his chest, well, there should be a little bit of a shadow on his chest. Let's see if I can get that area selected. I'll hide it, grab a brush. Maybe I'll use, let's do something a little bit darker than that. So maybe that'll be the darkest shadow. And I could try to paint it in. We'll use a really dark Type brush. Eh. There's something like that. Or I can use my selection tools and actually select the area that I want. So if I know I want the shadow to start here, it's going to go specifically to there. Get rid of that. 
hide it, brush it. Now I've got my shadow going up to his uh, up to his chest from there. All good? Any questions so far? That's the simple technique that we're working from. Make your vectors, make sure you can see individual areas uh, well defined, then go back in using Photoshop to add the, uh, the gradations of tonal values from there. Okay? Let's see what y'all can do for today.